Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, today's the day. It's my very first flight with the brand new DJI Mini SE. I've got the drone set up over there on the mat, and I'm out in one of my favorite places to fly, somewhere in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. And I've wanted to fly this drone for the last couple of days, but we've had nonstop rain in New Jersey, and I couldn't get outside and fly it, and I was so frustrated. So today's the first day I'll get a chance to put it up in the air. But I promise you, I've got a ton of batteries with me that are fully charged, and once I finish up here, I'm gonna start flying all over the state. So I'll put a little reel together to show you some of the comparisons of how the unit looks when it's flying over water and over forests and down at the bay, just like I like to do with all the new drones. I get. Now, before I put this drone up, a couple of things you want to keep in mind. When you first spin up the drone, there may be a firmware update that you have to do to the application. I had to do that. And what that did for me was introduce the Mini SE as one of the choices when I go into the DJI Fly app. So make sure you do the download there. It should be linked up with your drone already. The pairing should be done from the factory. But if you have to pair it, I've got a clip on the channel where you can go there and I'll show you how to pair the drones. But everything's ready to go. It's working fine. Now, when I put a drone up for the first time, I always like to get a feel for the drone because every drone handles a little bit differently. So when I put it up for the first time, I like to move it around a little bit but kind of keep it close to me, spin it around and see how the controls respond with the drone. Right now I've got it in regular mode, it's not in sport mode and it's not in tripod mode because I want to, again, get a feel for how it responds to the controls. Once I'm comfortable that it's going to fly okay, I'll send it all the way down the field and try to capture some footage and I want to make sure that it's going to handle really well before I send it off down the field so I don't lose it forever. I have no doubt that it's going to fly great, but I just like to take my precautions. All right, so let's get started, enough talking. So to start the drone up, I'm going to pull the two joysticks in and down. Take off. Props have spun up. I've set my GPS home point. I'm ready to go. Here we go. All right. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Boy, it's nice and smooth. The controls are really nice and smooth. And right away, I can tell that it's not as noisy as the original Mavic Mini. It's about the same noise level, just from recollection of the Mini 2. So again, I think what they're doing is using the motors, the props, and probably the ESCs off the Mini 2. All right, so let me take it up and down a few times. Nice and smooth, really nice and smooth. All right, forward and back. Left and right, or right and left in that case, and then forward. But notice how it stops right in the air. This thing is rock solid up there. It's not moving even an inch, and there's a bit of a wind blowing through here. Now, today it's a little overcast, so the video's not gonna be that spectacular, but I'm gonna send it downfield now. Let me hit the record button. All right, we're recording, here we go. <laughs> Every time I get a new drone, I have to make that noise. I can't help myself, it's just me being excited. Again, I'm like a kid at Christmas with this kind of stuff. All right, here we go. <laughs> And we're off. Oh man, that video is really nice. So again, it's 1080p at 60. That's what I'm recording at. Let me get it up above the trees there. And we'll take a look down. Boy, that's handling really, really nice. Very, very smooth. Now I'm gonna do some adjustments to the stick calibrations to slow everything down a little bit because right now I've got the stock settings on it. And we're running on Wi-Fi. I'm about 700 feet out, and I've got to keep an eye on it. Yep, I can still see it. So I don't want to go too far because, again, we're working on enhanced Wi-Fi. So I'm going to spin it around and bring it back. These trees are a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a challenge because when you think about interference, a lot of people think of Wi-Fi as like, oh, if you got Wi-Fi near, it's going to cause you a lot of trouble. Actually, trees are worse in some cases than Wi-Fi because of the water content in the trees. You wouldn't think that uh, that would be an issue for you, but water is something that Radio signals do not like. They can't actually transmit through water. So it's uh, trees have a really high water content and that can cause some issues. All right, there's the drone. Let me see if I can land it on the H. I always love to do this with a new drone. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I know you hand launchers and catchers out there like to sort of put it up and then catch it again. And that's pretty dramatic. But for me, if you can land it on the H, it's a home run. So big moment here, coming down. Again, I haven't checked precision landing. I'm gonna test all that stuff and see how it works. It has got optical sensors on the bottom. So let me pull it forward a little bit and bring it down. Pretty close. Now here's the challenge. I've got, I've got a landing mat right there and I've got grass all around it. So if I miss this, I'm gonna be chopping some grass up for sure. No, not too bad. Let's see, right in the H. Come on, go down in the H. Boom, right in the center. <laughs> anyway, all right. I know I'm getting super excited. I'm gonna be flying this guy like crazy over the next couple of days. So stay tuned to the channel because I've got a ton of clips I wanna put together. Comparing the Mini SE to the Mini 2, to other small drones like the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro, and any other mini drone that comes out, hint, hint. I'm not saying any more than that, but keep an eye on the channel. we got a lot of stuff coming up. And uh, I'm also going to put a quick reel together of all the places I like to fly. I'll just put a short little, just a reel together with a little bit of music behind it so you can get a feel for what the 1080p 60 frames a second looks like. Because for my money, buying a drone that's this sophisticated for under $300, 
is mind blowing to me. I think this is gonna be the drone that everybody's gonna want. It's a little more expensive than most of the drones on the market, but what you're getting in that package is GPS coordination, 30 minutes of flight time, three axis stabilized gimbal, live feeds back to your phone. You guys know all the specs on it. For me, DJI's got a home run on their hands right here, especially for new flyers. And the best news, when I did the initial clip, wasn't available in the US. And lo and behold, the day after I put the clip up, DJI decides, yeah, let's release it in the US. So you can go out and buy it right now. And I've got a link below if you wanna go and check that out. But anyway, stay tuned. What I'm gonna do is go fly it a little bit. I'll put a little reel together with some music behind it. Then I'll come back with some conclusions at the end because once I fly it a little bit, I'll have some opinions on what I think of the drone. But for, for right now, having flown it just that 30 seconds or however long it was up in the air, it handles like a Mini 2. It costs less than a Mavic Mini. So what's not to like? Anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed that footage, and boy am I having a lot of fun flying this brand new DJI Mini SE. And I think today I got probably eight hours in total of flight time because I brought a ton of batteries with me, and I promise you I flew through every one of them, and I was driving all over New Jersey, and it was just a great day overall. I tried to give you a real good mix of different styles of videos under different lighting conditions. So, for example, I did a couple of close shots where I'm flying along the road, or I'm pulling up alongside the trees, just to give you a feel for what it looks like close up. I also did a lot of long shots. Some some of the shots you're going to take are going to be pretty typical where you're flying pretty fast along the ground and then you elevate to give you sort of a perspective on your area. And I even did a couple of shots that were over top. So I'm flying over top of the trees, looking down, kind of a dramatic shot there. But everything you see came right off the SD card. I recorded everything in 1080p, 60 frames a second. I didn't enhance anything. So everything you see is exactly what you're going to get. And the lighting conditions changed a little bit throughout the day as well. When I first started down in the pines, it was kind of an overcast day. So things are a little bit duller down there because 
the sun wasn't shining as bright. But in the afternoon, by the time I got down to the bay, the sun had come out, so I had plenty of bright sunshine. And I was able to record some of that in that golden hour in the afternoon when the sun is really low in the sky and you get those beautiful shots. So I had a ton of fun out there. Now, I did want to answer a few questions that had come in off the original clip we posted about the Mini SE. Uh, a couple of people were asking about the transmission quality because it's based on enhanced Wi-Fi. And I know the Mini 2 is based on OcuSync, which is a different, more exotic technology, a little bit stronger technology. I can promise you there's no issues with the enhanced Wi-Fi and connectivity to the drone. Now remember, in the United States, we have a visual line of sight requirement where you can't fly the drone further than you can see it. And me getting a little bit older, I think my visual line of sight limits are about 1,500, 1,800 feet with a beacon on the top of it. If I fly it further than that, I can't honestly see that I can see the drone. With this guy, I had the beacon on it, I was flying it all over the place. I could get out to 1,800 feet, still see the drone, and have no issues whatsoever with the transmission connection. I never lost connection, never had any flyaways. So anybody worried about, gee, it's not going to fly quite as far as I'd like, it's going to fly plenty far forward and you're not going to have issues. Now, I'm not going to do a distance test on it because, again, I'm not going to break the visual line of sight requirement, but I think you're going to be just fine. And the other confusion is around that term Wi-Fi because a lot of people think, oh, it's based on Wi-Fi, it's going to stink. I've bought other drones that are based on Wi-Fi they go 50 feet and then they lose connection. It isn't basic Wi-Fi, it's enhanced Wi-Fi, which is something that DJI spent a lot of time on. So it's using the Wi-Fi carrier, but it's enhanced in the sense that it's constantly moving between frequencies in that Wi-Fi band. So it's looking for the strongest signal between the controller and the drone. It's gonna lock those two together. And as you're flying, it's constantly checking that signal and looking for other signals that might be a little bit stronger and it can frequency shift between those different signals to maintain that connection between the two. So don't worry about losing your quad. Put it up in the air, fly responsibly, you'll be able to get a hold of it. Another question I had was around noise. Um, and again, to my ear, I did have a Mini 2 with me. I put that up. I had the Mavic Mini with me. I put that up and I sort of listened. Now I'm gonna do a whole clip on recording all three of those and comparing them uh, with a frequency analyzer and show you the differences between them. But for now, when I'm listening to it, and again, I'm, I'm gonna talk about loudness or annoying noise, right? Because that's the thing you're really concerned about. Is it annoying? I found that this one sounds an awful lot like the Mini 2. It doesn't sound like the Mini 1, the Mavic Mini. That's a little bit noisier or quad. And I think what they're doing, the reason it sounds like a Mini 2 is because, like I said, I think they're using the props, the motors, and the ESCs, the control circuits, for the motors out of the Mini 2. So you're sort of getting a Mini 2 from a flight characteristic perspective. Okay, it's not OcuSync, but still pretty good. But you're getting a smaller frame, which is just like the Mini 1. So at any rate, it's quiet. I think, again, more along the lines of the Mini 2. I had another question about wind resistance, because I know one of the problems with the, not the problems, but one of the shortcomings of the Mavic Mini was if you put it up in really strong winds, it had a hard time fighting that wind. The motors just couldn't overcome a really strong wind. Now, I would tell you, don't put a quad of this size up on a windy day, but I know that you can't really tell what the wind's like at 400 feet above you. At ground level, it might be nice and calm, but if you get up high, especially around the shore, you could have some winds whipping up there that you didn't expect. The comparison I found on this one is when I put this up, now when I was down in the bay, sort of the end of the day, the wind really started kicking up. And I've got a shot here where I've got it sort of hovering next to some reeds where you can see the reeds bouncing. If you look in the background, those reeds are really whipping back there. So I think the wind, I had an anemometer with me, I put it up, I think I had it at about 15 miles an hour, and this guy was flying just fine. It's maintaining its position. I did find that when I sent it way out to the edge of visual line of sight and it got windy and I was up at about 200 feet, I had some issues getting back in regular mode. So I had to drop it into sport mode, come down closer to the deck and fly back at about 20 feet off the ground. But I had no trouble overcoming that wind. So I think it's going to be just fine. Now, the only thing I would caution you about, and I have to do a little more research on this, but don't let this thing hover and especially don't leave it sitting on a mat or on the ground on, especially in a hot day. Now, it was like 95 degrees that day and really humid. I did get a temperature warning on the main ship, and I think that was because I was flying it a lot. I'm swapping out batteries. I didn't give it a lot of time to sort of settle in between those batteries, so it got really hot sitting on the mat, and it gave me a chip overheat. So I just had to let it cool down, put it back up, and everything was fine. But just be aware of that. If you're flying on hot days, give it some time between your batteries before you put it back up in the air again, because the only way it cools itself off is by flying. It's not going to cool itself while sitting there. It has to fly through the air to have that heat escape and be pulled away from the chassis. So that was the only concern I had. And I, and I promise you that I put this thing through its paces. I flew fast. I flew low. I flew over water low. I didn't have any issues there whatsoever. Had it up to 400 feet, which is the limit. Flew up there just fine. No issues whatsoever. It battled a strong wind. I think it's nice and quiet. And again, I'm telling you all this because I really expect that there to be some shortcuts built into this product because the price of this is absolutely astounding, but I couldn't find anything wrong with it. So if you're a new flyer that hasn't jumped into the hobby, this may very well be the perfect drone for you because the price point is right. The 
the feature set is astounding for the price. And again, I think you can see from the video footage that it does pretty much everything you need it to do up in the air. So that's all I really had for today. And I'm sorry for going on some long, but I wanted to give you the footage and answer some of the questions as part of this clip. And I hope I did that. If you have other questions that I haven't gotten to yet, drop those in the comments below. I'm going to be doing a ton more testing with this over the next couple of weeks. I'll do some comparisons videos with this and Mini 2 and the original Mavic Mini and some bigger drones as well, just for kicks. But for my money, I think this is the perfect drone for new flyers, or if you're looking for a drone for your kids, if you're out flying yourself, you want to bring your son, your daughter along, may not be a bad investment for you. So anyway, thanks for watching today. Again, I'll be back with more clips very soon. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button down there because you don't want to miss anything that we're going to be posting on technology coming up. But that's pretty much it for today. If you're interested in the drone, I do have a link below where you can go to Amazon, take a look at it, make the purchase. We get a little bit of a, a rebate from Amazon if you do that, use that link to get the, uh, the drone. But anyway, it's up to you how you buy it. But my recommendation is if you're thinking about getting into the hobby, get off the fence. This is the drone you want to own. If you can't afford this drone, find something else you can fly. I'm sure with the release of this, there'll be some people that are probably going to be selling their Mavic Minis and moving up to something like this. But again, it's up to you what drone you fly. Don't let that stop you. Find something you can fly. I'm telling you, I was out for about 12 hours total. Eight hours of that was flying. And I had a smile on my face the entire time. I came home relaxed. I was happy. Everything was good in Rick's world after that. So anyway, thanks again for watching. And until next time, happy flying.